Freeform is Apple's newest productivity app with loads of creative potential. It's a great place to bring ideas to life. You can sketch out projects, brainstorm ideas, or create mood boards with a flexible canvas so you're never out of space to express your ideas. And you can use Freeform across your Mac, iPad, or iPhone, but it really shines best on iPad in my opinion. You can add photos, video, audio, documents, PDFs, web links, stickies, and more anywhere on a board within Freeform, making it perfect for collecting resources for a research project or mood boarding your home reno and DIY projects, which I've been doing a lot of. A lot of the tools inside Freeform are familiar to anyone who uses the iWork apps like Keynote or Notes, because those same tools are leveraged here with Freeform, things like shapes and brushes and more. And of course, given the nature of Freeform, it's also easy to collaborate in real time with your coworkers, your teammates, and group project members because it leverages the ability to use Freeform with SharePlay, like with Messages or FaceTime. Personally, I really like using Freeform to collaborate with my husband on home reno and DIY boards, but I've been using it a lot as an individual for brainstorming and designing future projects for things like this channel. Freeform, since I've been using it, has replaced a lot of the paid tools I was using to try and do all of these same things that I can easily do in just the Freeform app and across all of my devices. I did want to head inside the app though to give you a more in-depth look of all the tools and the functions and features to really show you how awesome Freeform is. But just know that it is incredibly easy to use and adapt to your own workflows. So let's go ahead and hop into the Freeform app and walk through a lot of the tools and features. So this is what the Freeform app looks like on the iPad, on my iPad home screen. I'm just gonna click into this. And you can see that it brings me to the main page of Freeform. So this is what the kind of main interface of Freeform looks like. We have our kind of main navigation here on the side. And then over here in this big open space is kind of a collection of all of our boards. You can click this here and it will hide that main navigation. You can click it again to bring it up. We have some additional tools here on the side. This icon right here will start a new board, which we will do here in just a second. Here we have a thumbnail view and this allows us to change the view of the boards within Freeform. I'm an icons girl, so I like to have icons and I'm a very visual person, so I like to see the thumbnails of all of my files. But of course you can do a list view if you're more of a list person and you can also sort it by date or you can sort it by name. I typically like to sort things by icons and by name, but of course you can change that as well. You can also use grouping for dates if you decide that you want to categorize your boards by date. I'm going to stick with icons and name, but there are of course different view options that you can do. And of course that will seem very similar to other view options. If you've used other kind of Apple productivity apps like Keynote or Pages or things like that, a lot of the functions within Freeform are going to feel very similar or almost the exact same. We have our select tool here. Of course, we can select multiple files this way to be able to duplicate or delete them here in the bottom corners. Of course, we can select all and kind of have multi-batching as far as how we decide to use our freeform boards. And of course, we have the search tool here. We have tons of boards and need to search across our freeform boards. In the main navigation, we have it categorized by all boards. We have it categorized by recents. We have a shared section. So Freeform has added the ability to collaborate in real time on Freeform boards with your teammates or coworkers, project mates, things like that. So that's really cool. And those boards will go here. We have a favorites thing, a favorites category. So if you decide to favorite different Freeform boards, you will be able to do that here. And of course, a recently deleted section for any boards that we might delete that we need to either recover or permanently delete later. So heading back to our all boards section, we're gonna hop in and create our own freeform boards. But before we do that, we can actually long press on our boards here to get additional options. This will allow us to rename boards, favorite or unfavorite boards. We can duplicate boards if we need to. Here's where we can share our boards or delete our boards with people if we need to. And if I need to favorite a board, I can just long press and click favorite and it'll go to our favorites category. So now let's hop over and create an actual freeform board so we can see kind of all of the tools and functions that Apple thought out when creating this productivity app. So to create a new freeform board, we're just going to click this icon here and it will open up a blank canvas for us to kind of get our ideas down, collaborate with our teammates and just things like that. 
So of course, here at the top, we have the name of the board. Right now it is called Untitled 2. If I click this down arrow, we get further functions for our freeform board. Of course, we can rename our board if we'd like. We can duplicate the board, favor the board, find things within the board. And the board currently has a dot grid. If we would prefer to not have that dot grid, we can select hide grid. Additionally, we can export our board as a PDF or print the board if we need to. I'm going to actually rename my board and I'm going to rename it tutorials. I'm also going to go in and show the grid because I like to use the grid when writing and typing and kind of mind mapping in freeform. Now I really like using freeform to kind of mind map and get the flow of my product, my digital product designs. But what I like most about Apple apps is that it really is a blank canvas depending on the app that you use. At face value, it seems like a productivity mind mapping app that you can use to collaborate with others on projects. However, because it's so kind of blank canvas, you can really use it and maximize it to whatever your goals are or whatever you need to accomplish. For example, Keynote, which is an Apple presentation app, on its face is a presentation app. You can use it like you would use PowerPoint or Google Slides and create presentations to show and illustrate different information that you need to convey. However, I used Keynote to create very advanced and interactive digital PDF files, things like digital planners and course guides and all kinds of things. So you can really use the tools available in each app to your own, depending on how you want to put your own little creative spin on it. And I think Freeform is a great place, a great app to do that as well. So of course, here in the top right hand corner, we see this little arrow that's grayed out. That is just our undo button. If we need to undo something that we've done on our canvas here, we have the share icon. Of course, this allows us to collaborate with others here. We can click this here and actually adjust the permissions of who we share our board with. So we can have um, anyone with the link and just share that link out. We can only um, collaborate with people we've invited and we can also change the permissions. So view only or they can make changes to the board and then we can toggle on or off whether we would like the people we invite to be able to also invite other people as well. So that is one way that you're able to share and collaborate on boards with other people. And again, we have that icon here where we can go ahead and create another board, another freeform board if we need to using that icon. So here are our tools in the main center. And I like how they're just categorized into five icons and then everything we need is within one of those icons. So if I click our pen tool, you can see that it pulls up our toolbar here. And of course, if you're familiar with any other Apple apps, you know that this looks very familiar to how Notes is set up with an Apple as well or other apps where you can draw and use those features like in Keynote and Pages as well. So we have our undo and redo buttons and all of the pen tools that we can use within Freeform. Pen tool, crayon, paint, highlighters, eraser, selectors, and all kinds of things, as well as the colors. If we don't want to use one of these default colors, we can click this color wheel here to choose from the color wheel spectrum, RGB values or hex code values. And we also have an eyedropper tool here where we can pick up color from things that we might add later on to our board. If we come over here, we see the three dots for more options. And if we click this, we can auto minimize our kind of pencil toolkit here. So if I click into this, it'll auto minimize the tool over there, making sure that I have as much canvas space as possible if I need it. We also have a draw with finger tool. So I really recommend using the Apple Pencil with the Freeform app because it's just so much more intuitive, it's more exciting, and it's easier to handwrite and kind of draw and doodle out your ideas. But if you wanna use your finger, you can have that selected here. And because I am using an iPad that supports Apple Pencil Hover, I do have a selector here for a hover preview. I can turn this off if I don't want to be able to use kind of the hover feature here within the app. There's also additional pencil settings here. So if I click this, it'll actually open up the Apple Pencil settings within the settings app. And this is where you can further customize the Apple Pencil settings to cater it to the Freeform app and across your iPad. So using the double tap functions, only drawing with the Apple Pencil, different pencil hover effects if your iPad supports Apple Pencil hover, scribble, and just all kinds of other Apple Pencil settings that you can easily navigate to from within the Freeform app if needed. 
So of course we have our pen tools. If we click into any of these, again, you can see that we have further options such as adjusting the size of our pen as well as the opacity here of our pen. We also have our marker here. We have a crayon for kind of a more textured look if that's what you're after. We have our paint tool here. And again, we can click into any of these to adjust the size of our opacity. For our paint here, we can adjust the opacity if we want. Kind of draw out our paint swatches here. And then we have our eraser. If we click into our eraser, we have a pixel and an object eraser function as well as different sizes. So pixel is what it sounds like. It's going to erase pixel by pixel for whatever we need to erase. If we decide to go with the object eraser, it's going to erase the entire object or the entire stroke that we've created. And then of course we have our selector tool here and this allows us to select whatever we've used within our toolbar here. And with this selected, we can cut, copy, delete, select all, resize, duplicate, separate if we need to our function here. And I can move this around with my finger. And you'll also see here we'll have um, back and forward interactions. So arrange forward or arrange back. And that is what we can use throughout Freeform to kind of arrange things back or forward, depending on if we want things on top of each other or superimpose things and whatnot. So that's a really handy feature as well. So that is the pencil tool within Freeform. And what I like using most in Freeform is the pencil tool and kind of drawing out my ideas and going on. The next tool in our toolbar here is the sticky note tool. And so if I click this, it'll pop up a sticky note and it says that we can double tap to add our text. So add text with a double tap. And now that we have our text added, if I click into this again, so I can go back into typing, you'll see that we can have further additional formatting using the tools here on the left and right hand corners. So we have our A here. If I click into this, we can adjust the point size of our text. And with sticky notes, the text is kind of pre-formatted. There's only so many options when it comes to the sticky notes. So I can select whatever um, text point size that I'd like. Let me make sure that's highlighted. And then I go in and select the size of the font that I want. And again, I can do bold, italic, underline, or strike through formatting. Over here on the side, we have it center aligned, but we can align it to the left or the right. And then here we can create a list, either doing bullets, numbers, dash, as well as create sub bullets, sub numbers, sub dashes by increasing or decreasing our list level. If I click off of my sticky note here and I just tap it without going into the text tool, you'll see that we'll also have an additional pop-up menu for further customization. So here I can change it to a predetermined or pre-default color for their sticky notes. We have a purple kind of magenta color, red, we have orange, of course, yellow, our traditional sticky note color. We have green, blue, and a gray. Again, we can access our formatting options here with the text of decreasing the text size, formatting it a bit more if we need to, center, aligning it, aligning it left, and so on. Here we can do our bullet list if we need to. And here we're also able to align the text within the sticky note itself. So either at the top or the bottom or the middle, of course. We can duplicate the sticky note if we need to by pressing this plus icon here, as you can see. Of course, we can delete a sticky note if we need to. And then we have a more options tool here. And you'll see that we have these back and front arrangement tools again. We have cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and we can also lock our sticky notes. We also have a description feature here and that allows us to kind of write a description of what the element is for accessibility. Of course, we can delete it. And then lastly, we have the style option, which I really, really like. And that allows us to copy the style and formatting of the sticky note and paste it on a different sticky note that maybe we want to have the same style. So for example, if I have another sticky note, another sticky note here. And I wanted to have the exact same styling as this current sticky note. Instead of just going through all of these same changes to try and get it to look the same, I can come to my sticky note that I really like the style of, go to style and click copy style. Then I can come over here to my other sticky note and click more, come down to style and click paste style. And then it'll paste the style of the sticky note, but keep that remaining text. So I won't have to duplicate a sticky note and change the text or come in and do all of the individual changes. I can just copy that style, the same color, the same formatting and whatnot, and just have it apply to that sticky note. And you'll find that you can do this throughout the Freeform app, which I really, really like. 
Next, we have our shapes tool. And if you're familiar with using Keynotes and Pages and other Apple apps, this shapes function, again, will look very similar because it's the same. We have all of our line tools, our basic shapes, and we have more shapes such as geometry, objects, animals, nature, food, symbols, education, arts, science, people, places, activities, transportation, work, and ornaments. I feel like I could probably recite that without even looking at these because I've used these so often in Keynote. And so it'll feel very familiar and kind of very welcoming and very easy to use freeform. And there's lots of kind of symbols and tools and shapes that you can go through if you're not already familiar with these shapes to add to your mind mapping or your board to your collaboration, which is really cool. So what freeform, what I imagine most people are going to use with freeform are the arrows and kind of these basic shapes. Because a lot of mind mapping is drawing out arrows and connecting ideas and um, projects. So let's add a shape just to show you that. I'm going to add a rounded rectangle here. And this green anchor here is to kind of adjust the radius of your rounded rectangle if you want to. And of course, you can adjust the sizing and proportions of that as well. If I click into this, I can also do further customization formatting. So here we can change the color. We can choose from one of these default colors or go into our color wheel with these. So we have further customization with the shapes here, adjust the opacity if we want, and we even have a no fill option if we want no fill. So this second tool here is going to be our border and we can choose from different border styles. We have kind of our scribble effect here and we can increase the point size so you can see that. We also have a dash line, a dot line, and of course our standard line, and we can change the point and the border color. We can choose from one of these default colors, of course, or we can select more to find our color based on the spectrum, the grid. We can use the eyedropper tool here to select our color, or we can use an RGB value or a hex code. And again, we can adjust the opacity with those as well. If we double tap, we can also type directly into shapes. Again, very similar to Kino and other Apple productivity apps. I'm glad that this is kind of ported over into Freeform as well, but we have this infinite canvas design of Freeform so I can zoom out as much as I want or zoom in as much as I want. So I'm never out of space within Freeform. Again, you accidentally, you saw that I accidentally rotated with that. Again, it's very similar to Kino of just anchoring with one finger and rotating with the other to rotate shapes and objects. So again, very similar to how other apps, other Apple apps are used for productivity. We can also come in here with our text tool that since I typed directly into my box, of course we have our traditional formatting here, but we'll also have more options with the text tools and the shapes here. Here we can actually select from the fonts that are installed on the iPad. And if you don't know how to install fonts on the iPad, I will link my video on how to install custom fonts on the iPad. But because I have custom fonts on my iPad, I can use those here. I also have further options for kind of customizing the text if I want to for my shapes here. So if I click this and click the A, I can adjust the sizing here as well, as well as the formatting if I want. So a little bit more customization options as far as how I would like the text to appear in my shapes or just as a standalone using the text tool here, which we'll cover. Again, of course, we have this plus icon, which will just duplicate that for us. And then we have delete if we need to delete something. And additionally, we do have a more option here. If we select more, again, we have those back and front options. We have cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and lock again. We also have auto size text. So depending on if we deselect this and we decide to move it, it automatically sizes the text appropriately to how we need for our box here. We also have style again here. We can copy the style and paste it across different shapes. We can also constrain our proportions if we want it to be kind of proportional, depending on how we want our boxes or shapes arranged. And again, we have description and for accessibility and a delete option if needed. So let's cover a little bit about the line tools because I think that will be really crucial to a lot of people who use Freeform. So if I come over here and we have three different line options, one is just a standard line, one that already has an arrowhead, and then we have our curved line. I'm gonna start with our standard line here. And of course, if I click into this, we'll have different line options. Again, a duplicate, a delete, and we'll have a more options here. Here is where we can select what the line type is, dash, dotted, our scribble line. We can adjust the weight and of course the color using those same tools, the opacity if we need to. Additionally, we have an arrowhead tool function here. 
and this allows us to add a specific arrowhead to either the start or the end of the line. So I can go in here and select any type of arrowhead that I need for whatever my mind map or project is. So I'll select an arrowhead here and I'll select kind of a straight line for my bottom here. And then I can just have this point wherever I need to for certain projects or if I'm trying to illustrate something. Again, we can go ahead and choose from an arrowhead that's already created and then we can go in and further customize it if we need to. But this is just a quick line for us if we just need a quick line that already has an arrowhead at one end. If we click more here, we're gonna have those same options of back and front, cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and lock. Again, the copy style, description, and delete function. And lastly, for our third line here, we have our curved line, which again, feels very familiar to other Apple productivity apps. If you're familiar with them, we can actually link and connect these to certain elements within our freeform board. So if I wanna make connections that way, I can. And I can also adjust kind of the curvature and radius of that line. What's really cool about the curved feature line is that if I click this, of course, I can adjust the arrowhead and the weight of that line, the way the line looks, if I want that arrowhead, but I can also adjust the connection between those two elements. So here I have it set to curved line, but I could have a straight line if I wanted to, or I could have kind of a standard squared off line to give a really professional look to the line if you don't wanna opt for kind of a curved look and it'll automatically create it for you and I think that's really awesome. Again, we have our duplicate, delete, and our more option, but I think this is just a really cool feature of being able to draw connections between our ideas within the Freeform app. So that covers a lot of the shapes and lines within Freeform and because there's just so many, there's just so many ways that you can kind of tackle and create kind of a conglomerate of different ideas and projects and things that you want to add to your Freeform boards and kind of visualize. Our third tool here is A, which obviously represents our text tool. And here is where we can type out our ideas, anything that we need to write and add to our freeform board. And again, we have our similar tools here, our alignment tools to align our text, our bullet lists if we need those. We have our traditional bold, italic, underline, and strike through. And since this is text, just standalone text, we do have more customizability when it comes to this text. So if I click A, we'll actually be able to kind of select more colors and um, have our point sizes here, but we can also go in and select custom font if we have custom fonts that we can use. So I'm just going to select this. If I just tap this with my finger without kind of double tapping to edit the text, we have another pop-up again for more formatting for the color that we want to choose. And if we want to choose our font, kind of arrange our font around, we can resize it with our finger using the anchors on the sides of the boxes. And again, we can duplicate, delete, or have more options like going front or back, cut, copy, paste, duplicate, or lock. We have the same style tool if we want to paste that same text style to other text boxes that we add as well as a description and delete button. And this is how we can add our own text. If we don't wanna write out our ideas or anything like that, we can type them out and draw those connections in mind map and visualize things that way. The last tool within this toolbar is an image icon. And this is where we can basically a catch all for adding tons of other things to our freeform boards. Of course, we can add images and video here, but we're able to use our camera to add things to our freeform board. We're able to scan things into our freeform board. We can add links and we also have an insert from where we can insert many, many different file types. So let's insert some photos. I can select multiple if I want to and add them all at once. So here are all my pictures that I can adjust as needed and I can move these around with my finger very easily and resize them as I want. If I click onto my image here, you'll see that we again have another pop-up menu and this allows us to do the original size of the photo. We can also use the replace tool to replace the photo if you wanna use a different photo. We have our crop tool here if we need to crop anything. We have an eye which allows us to preview the file or image that we insert. So in this case, it's an image, so we can preview that. And we can also double tap to preview files and images within Freeform as well. Of course, we have our duplicate button, our delete button, and then our more options button, which does have a few additional options for certain file types. So of course, front and back, cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and lock. 
but we also have shadows or rounded corners that we can turn off or on depending on the style that we'd like, as well as constraining our proportions. So being able to kind of stretch out images or anything that we wanna be able to do like that. Also, of course, we have our copy style. So if you wanna copy a specific style to a different image, we can do that if we want all of our images to not have rounded corners or not have shadows and things like that. So of course, we can do images and videos that way. And camera scan or links. Links are really cool because you can link in resources that you need to reference or things like that, whatever you need to add to your freeform board. So I'm just gonna insert a link like this. And then I can resize this as needed. Right now the proportions are constrained, so it's not showing kind of the whole thumbnail view of my website. But if I go to more options, turn off constrained proportions, and I can stretch it out however I want for my links. Again, if we click this link, this is where we can edit the link that we've added if we need to. If we click the preview button for links, it will open up into our internet browser. So here is the link for my website that it's opened up. And then if I go back into my freeform board, we have the ability to duplicate or delete it. And again, we can double tap to preview whatever we insert within our freeform board using that tool. What I really, really like about freeform though, especially is being able to insert whatever, essentially whatever I want into my freeform board. There's so many different file types that I can insert within freeform. So if I come over here and click insert from, I can actually insert things like PDFs. So if I open this, I can insert my PDF. If I click this, again, we have different options of being able to do the original size of the PDF, replacing the PDF, cropping the PDF if I need to, or um, getting a quick preview, either by clicking the eye icon or double tapping, duplicating it, deleting it. And again, we have similar tools like shadows and rounded corners and kind of pasting those styles or constraining those proportions as well. What's really cool though, is that I'm also able to insert things like Keynote files, which is something that I use a lot of. So if I wanna insert a Keynote file, I can do that as well. Which I think is just really cool being able to kind of do all of these functions within the Keynote app and just kind of mind mapping and getting out my thoughts and really designing and kind of pulling everything together without being worried about weird file things or not being able to draw my arrows or not being able to type. And because it's an infinite canvas, whenever I get to the edge of my canvas, I can simply just scoot it over or zoom it out or zoom it in. There's just so much that I can do within the Freeform app. And this is certainly one of my favorite apps that I've been using a lot lately. And I just think there's a lot of potential here. And again, with apps like these that are coming out from Apple, these productivity style apps, it really is just a blank canvas, giving you the necessary tools that you might need, and then letting you decide how you want to use them and whether you want to use them in a more unique way, put your own creative spin on it to kind of mind map these out. This app would be spectacular for product designers, anyone that needs to take notes or need to draw connections between things, students, and just, I, I see this app working for a ton of people and it's an app that I've been using a lot lately for getting out my ideas, my inspiration, mood boarding, and kind of just seeing things all at once connected on one canvas. And I, I really appreciate the thought that went into this and the tools that feel very familiar to me since I've been using these a lot in other Apple productivity apps and just being able to see that kind of ported over into Freeform, but in its own unique way and being able to kind of draw these connections and sticky notes and whatnot. And of course the ability to collaborate within the Freeform app will make this a great app when it comes to group projects and teamwork and working on projects together, but in real time in a really cool format in a infinite canvas and being able to pull in files and images and videos and scans. It's just very, very cool. And that was a walkthrough and tutorial of the Freeform app. This app has truly made things incredibly exciting for me in terms of brainstorming, mind mapping, and expressing my ideas without worrying so much about its format. I can add what I need, my ideas and so on, as is, which is incredibly powerful. Let me know your thoughts on Freeform in the comments below and how you plan on using it. I'm very interested to know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.